Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy and Chris with me. Shalom. We're going to be talking about the Mark of the Beast and the Book of Life in this class. We're going to be looking at several verses as we do this Bible study. Um, we're not going to be using a lot of hermeneutics or other ways of making up stuff as far as the scripture is concerned, but we have found a lot of scriptural texts from some of the hidden books and the lost books and the Old Testament and even the New Testament that talks about the Mark of the Beast and the Book of Life, uh, some of which you may not have heard before, but all of which will be very interesting as we answer the question, how is it that we will avoid taking the mark of the beast? Okay, this would be a very interesting class. Uh, I think a lot of us want to know that. Yeah, we definitely need to know um, how it is that we're not going to have to take the mark of the beast. Um, in the end times, uh, we hear a lot about the mark of the beast Um a lot of times tied with the Antichrist, and it is one of the first things that we have to deal with when we read the book of Revelation, um, even before the trumpets ever blow, before the vials, before the Antichrist, you know, before all these horrible things happen down here on the earth, one of the first thing that humanity deals with is the mark of the beast. Yeah. So in this class, we want to answer the question again. The question is, how is it that we're not going to have to take it? How do we make sure that we don't have to take it? How do we avoid having to take on the mark of the beast? And you're telling us that scripture tells us. This. Well, yeah, it tells us, you know, it, you know, the, that's the purpose of the scripture. The father gave us uh, uh, a heads up on all of these things that were coming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, praise the Lord. In his word, he actually told us what it is that we should do to prepare, how it is that we will avoid the, the mark of the beast. And that's what we're going to bring out in this class. We're going, Like I said, we've got a lot of scripture to cover. Um, so this should be a very comprehensive class as we jump around. We're going to look in um, the book of Malachi. We're going to look in the uh, book of Baroque. We're going to look in Psalms, Gad the Seer. We're going to look in Enoch, Jubilees, all talk about the mark of the beast or the book of life. But we're going to save the best verses for last. That's going to be coming out of the Shepherd of Hermas. All right. And there's plenty of other books we're going to talk about. All right. So let's get ready to get into it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father Abba, we come to you today, Lord, asking that you will open up the communication pathways so that we may understand your the essence of the word, teaching us about the mark of the beast and the book of life, what it is, how we can ensure that our names is written in the book of the life so we don't have to worry about having to take the mark of the beast. We this and many other blessings we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. And so be it. Okay, so since this is a Bible study, we're going to come in. We're going to look and do a search in all of the scripture for when the words Mark and Beast are listed in the same verse. And what we see is that there are actually seven times that we see the word Mark and Beast listed in the same verse. And they're all coming out of the book of Revelation. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the end and which is in Revelation in chapter 20. And then we're going to work our way back up to the first time the word Mark and Beast is used in the same verse. And that's up there in Revelation in chapter 13. All right. So let's look down at Revelation chapter 20. And if you would, Stacey, go ahead and read that verse for us. Okay. Revelations 20 and 4. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So what is this saying? So in all that's being talked about in this verse, 
what we see is that those who have the mark of the beast will not be in the millennial age. Okay, why, why do you say that? Well, that's what it says there. It says, um, neither his image, neither had received his mark aboard their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So those who live and reign with Christ for a thousand years will not have the mark on their hands or on their forehead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of excluding them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's important to to jot down in our notes that you know if you're planning on going into the millennial age that you won't want to have the mark of the beast. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now the next verse that we'll talk about is coming out of Revelation chapter twenty. Okay. Revelation nineteen and twenty says, and the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his, his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire with brimstone. So here you have what? You have the, the uh, beast as hmm? well as the false prophet. The beast and the false prophet who who are, you know, doing certain things here on the earth but the thing about it notice who who it is that's being tricked by these people the beast and the false prophet notice who it is that's fallen prey to these guys those that have received the mark of the beast the people that have the mark of the beast so that's why this class is so important um learning about the mark of the beast because you know we're actually going to learn how it is that we can avoid this in this class but you see, if we don't, not only are we not going in the millennial age, but we're actually going to uh, fall prey to the beast and the false prophet. And it is because people are going to um, listen to what they say. I want to uh, go ahead and say worship them, that that's what's going to prevent them from actually going into the millennial age. Okay. All right. Um, the next verse, I believe we're going to let Christian read since he's so quiet over there. It's going to come out of Revelation and chapter 16. All right. Go. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and greasome sore upon men which had taken the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Okay, so the people who have the mark of the beast, what is it saying about them here? Well, it's saying that they are also those who have worshipped the beast. Yeah, these, I mean, we found that a few minutes ago that they will be deceived by the beast. And that's how he's going to deceive them is he's going to cause them to actually worship him and the false prophet. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing here is that once those vials start uh, being poured out on the earth, that it is those who have the mark of the beast that's going to receive a noisome and grievous sore, uh, sore upon their flesh. So like a boil or something like that? Yeah, a boil. Uh, noisome means smelly. Oh, okay. So it's going to be a smelly uh, boil that's going to be on their flesh. Sort of like their... Um their skin rot. Well, the thing that when you say that it's going to be smelly and I, I automatically start thinking rotting skin and then my mind goes to leprous. Yeah, very well could be something like that. But one thing we can be sure of is that only those who have the mark of the beast have this to worry about. Those mm -hmm. who, who find a way to avoid having to get this mark of the beast um um they don't have to worry about this at all yeah mm -hmm. so this is one of the things that um you will once you take the mark of the beast you have to look forward to this sore that's going to appear on your body yeah once these yeah Definitely, it's one of the ways. It says that's one of the ways in the end times you will learn um, who the false prophet is or who the false teachers are, who the um, the uh, ministers who aren't teaching according to you know scripture is because when this event actually takes place, those who who aren't 
written in the book of life, we're going to find out, will be standing with boils, will be standing with these uh, plague on them. So you'll be able to distinguish who's right and who's wrong at that time because, you know, you'll be able to see that, you know, who's being affected by this, this, this plague. Mm -hmm. Like the, um, somebody's trying to come up and teach you something that it doesn't seem right according to the law, but then you notice that this guy is constantly scratching on this boil over here. <laughs> yeah, he's got boils all over his face, boils all over his body, you know what I'm saying? But he's constantly saying, you know, you, you should be following and listening to what I've got to say. <laughs> all right, buddy. All right, the next verse that we will be reading is coming out of uh, Revelation chapter 15. And if you would, Chris, go ahead and read verse 2. And I saw as there was a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So what is this talking about? Well, it seems to me it's talking about those. Um, well, my first thoughts go that you will have a choice whether you. You take it or not, because it said those who have the victory over it. Yeah, you definitely have a choice. You know, um, not everybody's going to get this mark. We've we've saw them before that, you know, those with it aren't going into the kingdom of heaven at all. They're not going into the millennial age. Um, they may go to that place that we call heaven, but that's in the spirit world. But, you know, it's those who actually will still be alive down here on the earth that will have no part in the mark of the beast at all. So what is it saying about the sea of glass and um, things like that? What is that talking about? Well, go ahead and read verse 1, Chris. Give us a little background on it. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And if you would, go ahead and read verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. And the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are they, thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. So this is talking about the 144,000. Okay. When you jump back and you look at uh, Revelation chapter 14, you'll see that it's all about the 144,000. So to me, what this is saying is that the people who have the mark of the beast have no chance of being counted amongst the 144,000. Okay. So when you uh, refer to the 144,000, my mind immediately goes back to... Um, when they sing the song of Moses. Yeah, those are the ones who will sing the song of Moses or the 144,000. Um, and we we'll see here that it is only those individuals that will um, have victory over the beast. In fact, you know, we could do a whole nother class on that's what it means to be 144,000 is that they had victory over the beast. Mm -hmm. That's who the 144,000 are are the ones who didn't take the mark of the beast. Okay. Simple as that. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see when the next time we see the word mark and beast listed. That's down there in chapter 14. Like we said, that's talking about the 144,000. But we're going to let Chris read verse 11. And the smoke of the torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So these people are working day and night who have this mark of the beast. Laboring. Laboring. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to see here in a few, in a verse or two, uh, it's going to talk about how um, those who who um, have the mark of the beast will be able to buy and sell. Well, me, when I think about that, I always, I also think that they will be able to hold down jobs. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and then when it's talking about how they're going to have rest day or night, maybe, you know, their, their, their work schedule, the, 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 maybe they're going to have two or three jobs to where they're not going to be, not going to get any rest. Well, what makes me think is what I think about is that they will be working no, there will be no Sabbath day for them. Yeah, exactly. There will be no Sabbath day. Um, so they're working seven days a week. 
and you know and then like i said two or three jobs and then you know they don't they don't get much time to sleep at all and we see people like that around now Mm -hmm. you know even even today we see you know people who you know are working you know 16 17 18 even 20 hours a day yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. seven days a week yeah Mm -hmm. all right the next verse is going to be uh verse nine read that one and then we're going to let you read uh 10 after and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead head or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. So this is why so many people are afraid of this mark of the beast. They're going to receive the wrath of God. Ain't that what it's saying right there? Mm-hmm. Those who have the mark of the beast will drink of the cup of the wrath of God. And that is that great and dreadful day of the Lord that we hear about those seven trumpets. Here you have one of the angels who has the trumpet or the vial here who's even uh, giving this message that, you know, uh, you take the mark if you want to. But, you know, these trumpet blasts are, you know, you're going to hear them the loudest. These vials are going to be poured on you. Go ahead. So when you're thinking, when you're talking about the wrath of God, you're talking about. Uh, that day when, like, all judgment breaks loose. Yeah, yep, yep. The, the, and it's not necessarily a day. No, it's definitely not a day. We don't know exactly how long it would be. Now, don't mix it up with Judgment Day, which lasts for a thousand years. Right. Uh, we're mm-hmm. already there. But we're talking about um, when we hear about the sky being darkened, the yeah. sun not giving her light, that global earthquake you hear about. We hear about stuff coming out of the sky. Guy, that's the great and dreadful, or at least the start of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Like I say, you don't know how long that day is going to be. Okay. Go ahead to the verse, the next verse, Chris. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So, so the person with the mark of the beast will be tormented in front of the lamb. Think about that for a second. Mm-hmm. So this to me, and, and you know, this, this verse really jumped out at me over 20 years ago when I read this, that, you know, these people are being tormented in the presence of the lamb, which means to, that it would include believers. It would include some of the father's, otherwise, otherwise some of the father's children. Okay, I don't understand. I don't put that. I don't understand why you say that. You mean, well, go ahead. You mean like people who believed and maybe tried to a certain degree, but they still got the mark or worship the beast, and now they're being burnt with the torment and right. fire. Exactly. Okay. See, you have to understand. You know, some of the father's people are going to get this mark. Mm-hmm. You know, some you believers, huh? some believers, some believers, some who believe and will confess the Lord Jesus are still going to take this mark. And we're going to see why in the next verse. And so those who do, they're like, like Chris says, they're going to be burnt in the presence of the lamb. So the, so even though that they, they are believers, they're still going to suffer the same fate as the non-believers because they have taken on this mark. Well, yeah. You know, with all of the speculation that's going on around the world, you know, this mark of the beast could very well change our DNA. So we're not human anymore. We're not as we're not in his image anymore. We're not created us anymore. Hmm. You know, some would, some, like I said, some would even go as far as say that they're not going to be human anymore after they take this mark of the beast. We are genetically modified. Genetically modified uh, people. And, you know, so they're, they're, they're going to have to be recycled. Hmm. They're going to have to be born again. Okay. All right. So the next verse is coming out of Revelation in chapter 13. Um, go ahead and read that. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Yeah, so that's uh, chapter, what we say, uh, 13 and verse 17, that you're not going to be able to buy or sell. And I believe that that is, though you are a believer and you, you know, you 
you say, and actually do love the father. But when you have that choice of whether to buy or sell, to eat or not eat, you will take that mark. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we saved this one for the uh, last verse out of this portion, because this is what's going to actually force people to take the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. This is what it, nowhere in the scripture does it say that they're actually going to make you take it. There's nowhere out of all of the prophecies about we've read everything that talks about the mark of the beast and nothing in there said that they were going to put a gun to your head, that they were going to hunt you down, that they were going to put this stuff in blow darts and shoot you with it. <laughs> nothing, nothing here implies that they're actually going to make you take it. They're not going, going to force to accept it. You. Yeah. It's saying, what does it say? And that no man might buy or say sell save he that had the mark of the beast so that it's going to give you the option take the mark of the beast or you won't be able to buy or sell simple as that mm -hmm. that's what's going to make people choose to take the mark of the beast is because they need the ability to buy or sell right right mm -hmm. so why do so then the question is the question of this video is, how is it that we prevent ourselves from having to get the mark of the beast? How do we stop ourselves? How do we make it so that we don't have to get it? How do we uh, like start preparing um, so that we don't have to take this mark of the beast? The, the, the answer is you're going to have to be able to live without, with, the store. without having to buy or sell. And can we do that? Yes, you, you and and you know I think it's talking about all mon money. It's like they're about to cash you out of the economy. You're not going to be able to, you know, be a part of uh, the economic. Um, uh, yeah, the yeah. systems of the world. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like now if I were to strip you of all of your cash, your credit cards, your checkbook, and mm -hmm. every other thing that you have to purchase. Your Bitcoin. Your Bitcoin, <laughs> your food stamps, everything. Yeah, We're about mm -hmm. to take everything away from you. Right. And so now, how are you going to live? That's, that, is, that is the answer to the question. Is the only way we're not going to be able to have to take the mark of the beast is if we can live our life without buying or selling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So think about it. How 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 much of our lives depends on us having to buy and sell? I think um a a, a vast amount of our lives depend because you got food, mm -hmm. and though you can say, well, I can plant a garden and things like that. Um, what about your electricity? Yeah. yeah. Your utilities like water and communication. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm Your shelter. Clothing. Your land tax. Yeah. Um, so you have to consider all of that stuff. Yeah, all of those things, like we say clothes, you know, we our bodies need heat. Where are we gonna get heat from? Where are we gonna um yeah, t uh pay our bills and stuff? This is what's going to make it hard to not get this mark of the beast is because you know we need money to survive yeah i always say that you know the women of today will probably be put in a um greater predicament and I also I always think about you know how scripture says about how um, those who um who have children will be in a worse state yeah because you know you got your babies over here that's uh, crying and saying, mom, I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, you know, um, what am I to do? Mm -hmm. And after so long, you start seeing them become ill and all that, you know, your mind start talking to you and your emotions and things like that. And you start doing things that you didn't think that you were ever capable. You would even deny the father, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you and were put in that situation. Yeah, yeah, women, women are built that way. Yeah. You know, and, you know, so there we there we are um, because our our bellies are uh, empty and because we're cold because we don't have medic medications that mm -hmm. we're used to. Yeah. It's going to make people who would otherwise say, uh -uh, no, I'm not taking the mark of the beast say, you know, I have no choice now. Yeah, it makes me think I wonder if they set it up. 
you know, had a plan from the beginning and actually set it up like this, where it's very hard for people to, you know, you can easily say, well, I'm going to um, go out there and put some seed in the ground. And, you know, we was having a discussion about, you know, it takes a while for seed to actually come up. Three, and then, three to six months. Just because you put it in the ground and we've, we're testaments for this. Um, just because you put it in the ground and fertilize it and water it and love it and all that other stuff doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come up. Don't mean you're going to be eating. Yeah. Yeah. And then it takes a lot of seed to actually feed a family, mm -hmm. you know. But you say, did they do it you know, intentionally? Yeah. You have to remember, they call they call this an Egyptian culture. When you look at your dollar bill, it has all kinds of Egyptian symbols on it. Well, you have to remember that it was in Egypt that humans had to purchase food to eat for the first time in all of history. Yeah. Before the before uh, Joseph and you know those seven years of famine, uh, followed by the seven years of plenty. Before that event happened, nobody purchased food ever. Nobody purchased food. Even when the even when the, the guys would come around on the little carts or the little uh, wagons selling stuff back there with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they wasn't selling food. They were selling salt and they were selling garments, garments or or gems or you know tools and stuff like that. They didn't have you know tons of corn. That right. they were, you know, coming, you know, to sell, mm -hmm. you know. And so even to this day, humans are the only species on the planet that has to pay to eat. No other species has to pay to eat. I mean, That's you think sad. about it. We we got animals here on our homestead. Right. And, you know, we got we got chickens, we got ducks, we got sheep, you know. And, you know, how, how much do we feed them? Oh, we hardly ever feed. Them. We don't. We got twelve. <laughs> we got acres and acres of land, and you know they better get out there and get it. And they seem to be doing pretty well. They can go out there and find all the food they want. Yeah, a lot of times when they're just hanging around the yard or the porch, I'm like, uh, y'all better go out there and do what chickens are supposed to do. Yeah, I'm not about to feed you. Go find your food. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> the chickens and the ducks and the, and sheep, they don't have to worry about taking the mark of the beast because they don't care nothing about buying or selling. Mm -hmm. Humans, on the other hand, we have been trained to where we don't think there is a way for us to survive without money. The yeah. average person will tell you that you can't live without money. And, you know, what that translates to is that you have no choice but to take the mark of the beast when it's presented to you. Otherwise, you're going to die. Mm. So the answer to the question is, is you're going to have to be able to live without buying or selling. But how, how are we going to do that? Like you said, if, if you were to decide today that you were going to live without the grocery store and you were going to go get you some seed and plant. It's still going to take you months and months to grow that seed if you know what you're doing. And if the environment, if if yeah. if if the elements participate, you get rain, you get, you know, sun. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I've said since we do live here on the homestead and I'm like, well, we can provide our food. We can, you know, clothing, you know, we, we know how to sew and things like that. And. And we have shelter and, you know, you can knock down trees and possibly build you a hut or whatever. But then I start thinking about that land tax, you know. They got did they... to the point where you have to pay for the right to use land that you own. Yeah, you have to pay for it. And the thing about it is that you can only pay for it year at a, one year at a time. You can't say, okay, you know, you can't go into the uh, county clerk's office and say, well, I want to pay for my land tax for 10 years. Yeah. You're not allowed to do that. You can only pay for it for 12 months. And then you come back and you pay for it another 12 months. So you're it's like, like a doing it intentionally. Yeah, you're like a cat. It's like a catch 2020. What are you supposed to do? There's, you know, or if you don't pay for your land tax, they're going to throw you off your land. Yeah. So what do you do? You know, that's not, you know, that's not a valid reason, valid, valid um, reason to say that I'm on a homestead and I can make it because you do have that land tax. You have that land tax. Yeah. But now, before we go on to the biblical solution to this problem, because right now we're just talking about 
practical stuff, farming and all of that stuff. But like, you know, like my wife keeps keeps saying, you know, we have been doing this for um, almost seven years. We used to be city people mm -hmm. surviving off Walmart trucks and, you know, to for our survival. And all of a sudden now we're homesteaders having to learn how to be farmers. And it is quite difficult. Yeah. And then you go back and you think about the preppers. People who are prepping and saying, well, I'm going to store up, you know, this amount of grains and I got my canning jars and all this kind of stuff. But that's good. But, you know, grain only lasts for so long before the weevils and the bugs and stuff start yeah. taking over. And there's really nothing you can do about it. You and, can, you know, a lot of that canned yeah. food, it only lasts for it so many years. It only lasts for so many years. So and what what are you going to do? The question is, what are you going to do? To not take this mark. Make right. a long term solution. Yeah, a long term solution. That's a good answer. Mm -hmm. And the long term solution is that your name has to be written in the book of life. So that is the biblical. That is the biblical solution to this problem is that your name has to be written in what they call the book of life. Okay. Now, I may have a jumped ahead of myself just a little bit, but if you would, Chris, scroll back up and read uh, verse 8, and we can see the connection between those who have their names written in the book of life and their ability to avoid this beast and the false prophet. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. Of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So this right here is the key to not having to deal with this, this uh, beast. And the mark of the beast is by having your name written in the book of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, you know, we're going to go down through here and we're going to look at what the scripture says about this mark of the beast. Because, like I said, let me say it again. This is the biblical solution. I mean, many people are coming up with practical solutions, but they're promised not to work. Storing up food, uh, waiting on the rapture, uh, whatever, you know, all of these other plans that man has come up with. The only way that we can avoid not having to take the mark of the beast, as we're going to find out in these uh, four or five verses here, is by having your name written in the book of life. Go ahead and read, what is it, verse 8, chapter 17? Right. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition, and they that dwell upon the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. And when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. So these are the people who are actually going to put their faith in the beast. Those who take the mark. Those whose name is not in the book of life. It is when they, when they, when they put their faith in the beast is when they will take the mark. Mm -hmm. Well, you, 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 we learned over in the book of Daniel that a beast is a government. Yeah. Yeah. So you think of the government systems of the world, whether it's, you know, the United States or Russia or whatever it is, our government, you, you know, it kind of all goes back to the United Nations, which is the real ruler of the world. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're really all under the United Nations or whatever. So, you know, they could very well be this beast that is being talked about or it could be. Uh, has something to do with, you know, the Pope and the Vatican or whatever, but whatever it is, whatever this beast is, when it presents itself, it is those whose name is not written in the book of life that's actually going to put their faith and hope in it. And they're going to end up taking on this mark of the beast because of it. With the government, when the government tells them to do this thing, they're going to go do it. Mm -hmm. Just like so many years ago when they told them to go get a social security card, yeah. a lot of people resisted. Yeah. Until, you know, it, it was, you know, dependent on their survival, whether they had this Social Security card or not. And then they lined up to take it. Yeah, depending on if they were... To get their benefits or not. Yeah, I remember, you know, you're talking about the Social Security cards. But I remember when um, I was working at the, working for the Postal Service and everybody was getting their... Um, 
uh, first of the month, third of the month checks through the mail. And then they started implementing, well, you're going to have to get a bank account. Yeah. And a lot of people were resistant. They don't to, want a bank account. Yeah, they didn't want a bank account. And so they were saying, well, you know, how how you ain't going to be able to, you know, get a check. So it was living without yeah. this bank account and resisting yeah. until all of a sudden one day they said, we're not no, delivering these checks. No the bank account, anymore. no check. Yeah, because we stopped having to deliver the checks through the mail. So they were forced to get the the bank account. Yeah. And so they ran, so they lined up. They lined I up bet if you'd, went, if you'd have went to the local bank that day, You'd have had a whole lot of people there in there that you ain't never, you ain't never, the bank ain't never had that many people in there one time. Mm -hmm. But but all of a sudden, no bank account, no check. And now the banks are full of people, you know, filling out applications to open up an account. Some for the very first time. That is exactly the way it's going to be with this mark of the beast when they say that you cannot buy or sell. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris, if you would, would you read uh, verse 12 out of chapter 20? And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which was the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. So the, the question becomes, what is this book of life, and how do we make sure our names is written in it? Yeah, I've always heard a lot about this great book, this book of life, and I think... Um, you, when you was a soul winner on the streets of Washington, D.C. and Maryland, how you would say that that would be one of your, um, like... That was one of my, part of my your script, script, is your name yeah, in the book of life. in the book of life, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it's the reason why is because the scripture doesn't go into much detail as to what uh, the book of life is. We, we see that there's only uh, seven or eight times in all of scripture do you see the phrase book of life written. And it's very important. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's extremely important. I mean, it, you, this, this is our only way to ensure ourselves that we don't have to take the mark of the beast is by having our names written in the book of life. But yet the only times you see the words, the phrase book of life is one times in Philippians. And then the rest of the times in the revelations that we're reading now that you don't you don't see it ever listed again in the Bible. Mm. But now we do have some other scripture that we're going to get into. Like I said, um, we do have the apocryphal books. We got the hidden books. We're going to touch on those. But if you will, just to finish out this last verse, would you go ahead and read verse 15, Chris? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you don't name is not written in the book of life, you're going into the lake of fire. But that shouldn't be surprising because it said it a few minutes ago that, you know, if you don't have your name in the book of life, you're going to end up with the mark of the beast. And those whose names who, who have the mark of the beast are going to burn mm -hmm. before the lamb. So yeah. it's saying the same thing. Yeah, saying the same thing. All right. So we need to find out what is this book of life. And let's jump over and look at one more verse out of the book of Revelation. And that's going to come out of uh, 21 and 27. And there shall in no wise enter into any that are defiled, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So what is he talking about here? You might know. Mm, he was talking about say something about abomination and enter into wickedness. Um, well, go back to verse 10 and we'll see what he's talking about. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me to a great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of the heaven from God. So he's talking about New Jerusalem. If you don't have your name written in the book of life, you do not have the opportunity to go in New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So the, the New Jerusalem is excluded. The kingdom of heaven is excluded. The millennial age is excluded. And your destination is the lake of fire if your name is not written in this book of life. Everything that pertains to uh, the father, those things that pertain to him you will be cut off from them. Yeah, you cut off from those things. And then you say, okay, so what is this book of life? Yeah. Well, when you look at it in all of scripture, 
and you look for uh, the phrase book of life, the only other times you see it is over in Philippians in chapter four, you see the phrase book of life. Go ahead and read verse three, Chris. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with my other fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. All right. So you see here that, you know, these people are doing stuff for the widows or um, laborers. laborers, but it doesn't tell you um, how it is that their names got written in the book of life. No, it just tells you that um, that their name are in the book of life. Yeah. Those who are doing these um, acts of charity, their name is actually already written in the book of life. So what is it? What else it? What else did we hear? Okay, so now let's expand our search a little bit and go off into the apocryphal books okay. and see because there is another time that we see the phrase "book of life" written in the apocrypha, and that's coming out of the book called uh, Baroque. And let's take a look at what it says. Verse one. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Well, I kind of made an error there because it doesn't have the word, the phrase book of life. It just has the book. Um, has the phrase of life. It, it has the word book and the word life in the same sentence. Mm -hmm. But where it does give us a hint to what the book of life is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but my point is, and I, and I included this so we can be comprehensive to show that in all of the Bible, including the apocryphal books, we are never told what the book of life is, yet it is extremely important. Yeah, you want we want to know what the book of life is because we need to know, we need it. Yeah, I need to get my hands and be a part of this. I need my name written in this book of life. Yeah. So, okay, we need the name written in the book, so we need to find out what is this book of life. Yeah. So, okay, so going forward in this video, I understand that there are two different questions. What are the questions? Um, the first question is, what is this book of life? What is it? And the second is, how do I get my name in this book of life? Uh, how do you get your name written in? And that's two separate questions. And so let's address the first one because, you know, we're saving the best for last, like we said. So we're going to come in and we're going to see, okay, what is this book of life? Mm -hmm. Now, I've gone through all of the, uh, the King James Version of the Bible, and I have found some other... Um, times that we uh, hear about this so-called book of life. The problem is, or the problem was, the reason why they were hard to find was because it doesn't call it the book of life. It calls it something else. Mm. All right. So let's go down through these and let's take a look at these uh, individual verses right here. Okay, now there's a few other places in the book of Revelation that talks about the book of life. It doesn't really call it the book of life, but if you go over and you read in Revelations in chapter 5, it's almost all about the book of life. Mm -hmm. You remember the seals? Yeah. The seven seals? Mm -hmm. And how those seven seals were on a book that the Messiah was coming back to open? Mm -hmm. Well, that book that he was opening those seals are on the book of life. Mm -hmm. Those seven seals are sealing up the book of life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you look at the seven seals and how they have played out in history, each one of those seals was pertaining to the book of life. And when you come over to Revelations in chapter three and verse five, it's talking about uh well go ahead and go ahead and read verse five. Okay. Verse five. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So again, we're hearing book of life, but it's not telling us. Um, what how, is it? What is it? It's telling us that your name can be removed out of it. Mm -hmm. You can be taken out of it, but it doesn't tell it doesn't tell us how to get our name in it. And that's going to be the second or the third part of this video.
Mm-hmm. All right, but let's jump over in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 32, and we see another um, uh, verse kind of like that, talking about our name being taken out of the book of life. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive thy sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. So this is Moses. Mm, yeah. And notice how Moses is aware of this book of life already. Mm-hmm. He's like, he, he, this is Moses and he's, and Moses is like, Hey, take me out of that book. You know, yeah. my erase my name out of that book. Yeah. I never, I never realized that, but that is the book he's talking about. He's talking about the book of life. Read 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, whosoever hath sinned against me, him, I will blot out of my book. So again, we're hearing that, you know, your name can be removed. But it's not really telling us what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So now let's go. And, and these are kind of at random. But let me go over to uh, Psalms and 69. And we'll read a verse out of there. Just looking at my notes. Read verse 28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. So this is David or Solomon uh, petitioning the father to let his enemies be removed from the book of life. So this book was commonly known about um, and spoken about in the Old Testament. Yeah, spoken about a lot in the Old Testament. Uh, In fact, let's jump over to the book of Daniel and we'll see another time that this book is uh, talked about. Daniel and chapter 12, if you would go ahead and read verse one. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be the one that shall be found written in the book. So here it is. Daniel's talking about this book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the book of life is, is, uh, like you said, it's well known. Yes, this great mysterious book yeah all right it seems to me like everyone's name starts off being written in the book of life but then they're blotted out one by one well we don't know we haven't been told how the name gets in there yet so you don't know if everyone's name has been it was in there at one point i mean you can only speculate yeah we're told that there are ways to get out of the book you know, by sinning against the father and such, but we haven't been told how your name gets there. Now, one time have we been told that, you know, how how um, your name is getting written in there, but like I said, we're saving the best for last, but speaking of being removed from the book, read uh, verse 18 and 19. Matter of fact, just read uh, Revelation verse 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Read read the next verse. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city from the things which are written in this book. Talking about the book of Revelations. Mm -hmm. If anybody were to try to change the way... uh, the prophecies of the book of revelation and try to say this is going to happen or that ain't going to happen to try to change the essence of the book their names too will be removed from the book of life yeah. mm-hmm. but you know a lot of people confuse this with the entire book yeah and then you know the entire bible i yeah. should say mm-hmm. and then they you know would start you know questioning you know all of the different uh, translations or uh, translations and the questioning well you have to remember it's the essence of the word as long as you don't change the essence mm-hmm. so having a different translation won't be such a big problem but removing other books from the bible would yeah. be the huge problem mm-hmm. some of these books that we're going to take out some of these books that we're going to look at here in a second which have been removed from the Bible. Yeah, that actually throws the whole Bible off. Well, we're going to see here in a second that some of those books that they removed from the Bible is actually going to tell us how it is that our name is actually supposed to be written in the book of life. Mm -hmm. We were told, but they took the books out. Mm -hmm. And so now we don't even hear about those books. Mm -hmm. 
Matter of fact, let's go over and take a look at one of these books that was removed from the Bible. That's the uh, book of Enoch. We're going to look in chapter 47 and we're going to let you read verse 3. As it talks about the book of life too, I believe. At that time, I beheld the ancient of days while he sat upon the throne of his glory, while the book of the living was opened in his presence. And while all the powers which were above the heavens stood around and before him. So we have this book being opened mm -hmm. called the book of the living. Yeah. That's the book of life. Yeah. So even Enoch knew about the book of life. Yeah. It's been around a long time. This, yeah. It's been what from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. Do we hear about this, this uh, book of life? Mm -hmm. Well, let's hear. Let's look at another uh, scripture that talks about the book of life. This one is going to come out of a book called Gad the Seer. Now, Gad the Seer is referenced over in First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 29. Um, but it is one of the, the uh, books that was taken out of the scripture like Enoch and like this other book that we're going to look at here. But let's jump down and we're going to look at a section out of chapter 14 of the book called Gad the Seer. It's describing the Great Tribulation. And there's a section in here that talks about these books that are to be opened. If you would. Stacey, go ahead and read verse 7. And then a man dressed in linen brought before the glory of the Lord three books that contain records of every man. And he read the first book, and it contained the just deeds of his people. And the Lord said, These are granted eternal life. Now, this goes back to that other verse that we were uh, reading about over there in Philippians, right? Mm -hmm. the, because it's talking about deeds. Mm -hmm. So this book of life has something to do with our deeds. Yeah, our actions. Mm -hmm. Right? And, you know, so it says, and... Um, so there were three books that were actually opened. We can look down and we can see about these other two books, the books of intentional sins. We see in verse 10 and then the books of the wicked. Um, we'll save those for another class. But in this one, it says, and he read the first book and it contained the just deeds of his people. And the Lord said, these are a granted eternal life. So without telling us how it is that our name is actually written in the book of life, we do see here that those who have done just deeds are included in the book of life. Yeah, we think about um, when he talks about those two ladies um, and now we're seeing talk it talking about the um, just deeds. All right. So let's look at a, another verse here. And I wanted this, this video to be comprehensive. I wanted to cover everything. Um, there's one verse over in Malachi that I want to take a look at right quick. It's also talking about the book of life coming out of chapter 3 um, and verse 16. We'll let you read that, Chris. Then they that feared the Lord spake often to one another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. Okay, so you have this book of remembrance. Okay. This is the book of life. He's remembering the deeds that we have done. Okay. Every deed, I can't remember what book it, it came out of, um, but there is a, a scriptural account describing how there are angels who are writing down our every action. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. they, they're actually going in and everything we do, they're actually writing them down. They're writing down our actions. You know, of course, you have um, the bad guy, Satan, that's writing down all, he's only writing down bad actions, but there are um, holy angels who's writing down every action. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? And the ones who, you know, are committing these just deeds are being accounted in this book of remembrance or this book of life. And that's what's going to be opened at the seventh at the seventh seal. When when the, when the Messiah opens the seventh seal, that's when we're going to have this judgment. Yeah. Well, my mind immediately goes to the book of Hermes. And I know I don't want to try to skip, but my mind is constantly well, clicking back to the book of Hermes. Yeah. Why? Uh, because I'm thinking about the lady and Hermes with the book. 
And I'm just wondering, is that to the Book of Life? No, the book that the, that the church was reading to Hermes? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> because you remember she actually read the book to him. Yeah. Or, you know, or allowed him to write down. But this book here, we see that it has names in it. The book okay. of life that we're talking about. Go ahead. But it also has deeds in it as well, right? Uh, deeds? What do you mean it has deeds it in has it? It has the things that we've done. Um, just deeds. Does it can't contain just names of people who have done just deeds? Well, or does it contain the just deeds that these people have done as well? Okay, well, let's jump over there and let's look at the Shepherd of Hermas right quick. I was going to go to, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Just like I said, I want to be comprehensive. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to look in the Third Testament of the Bible mm -hmm. and pull out one verse there. And then we're going to go over and we're going to see what you're talking about out of the Shepherd of Hermas. Okay, this next verse will be coming out of the Third Testament of the Bible. You can find a link to this uh, uh, book on our channel, probably in the description of this video or maybe in the comment section. If not, let me know and I'll make sure you get a link to the PDF and the audio book for this um, this book here, the Third Testament of the Bible. Now, this verse that we're reading here is coming out of chapter 42 which is called Guilt and Penitence, Trial and Suffering. We did a whole class on that. Remember that, mm -hmm. say? Yeah, that was a good class. Well, this verse we're going to read is out of verse 4, and this is the one time when the Third Testament of the Bible mentions the book of life. Do not forget that if I have come to tell you that none of you will be lost, it is also true that I have said that every debt must be settled and every fault erased from the book of life. It is up to you to choose the path to me. Free will is still yours. Mm -hmm. So again, we're talking about um, the uh, book of life, but it's saying that it is it, it contains deeds mm -hmm. and the errors that we've made or the stains that are, that are in our book, if we have our own individual book, um, but we, we have our own indiv individual paragraph in the book of life. All of the wickedness that we have done, we have to make up for it. Yeah. We have to erase. What does it say? Um, every debt must be settled and every fault erased from the book of life. Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking that it maybe contains other things than just names. Uh, why you say that? Because it says every fault shall be erased. Well, it has your, it, what the book of life has, it has, the way I understand it, it has your name followed by your deeds. Okay, yeah. So it has names and deeds, mm -hmm. right? All right, um, and you know, when those books are open, we're going to have the judgment. And if you still have faults or if you okay. still have stains or if you still have debts in there, well, now you got this apocalypse that's going to help you cleanse those purified through pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's jump over and let's look at the shepherd of Hermas. Yeah. Okay, so we're in the first book of the Shepherd of Hermas, which is um, his visions. We're in chapter one. And if we look down in verse 24, we see the phrase book of life. So um, if you would, Chris, go ahead and read that. And if you don't mind, try to skip these bracketed parts down here. They're added text, but do your best. As the workman bringing forth his work offers it to whomsoever he pre pleaseth, so shalt thou by teaching every day what is cut off a great sin. Wherefore, cease not to admonish thy sons, for the Lord knows that they will repent with all their heart, and they shall be written in the book of life. Yeah, so here it is for the first time we've actually hearing about somebody's name being written in the book of life. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can start making the transition from have we answered what is the book of life? Mm 
I think we did answer that question. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a book of our of deeds. Yeah, book of book with your name and the deeds that you've done written in it. Mm -hmm. right. A book of remembrance. Yeah. It's a uh, um an account that goes back to the foundations of the world that shows everything that we have ever done. It's a book of your life. Book yeah. of book of yeah, yeah. book of every yeah, of everybody's life. Your book person. of every all right, but here we see that um, after his sons repent of their life with all their heart, then they will be written in the book of life. So that's one way to be written in the book of life is to be repented. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of what we're saying over there when we read about the stains and the debts in the Third Testament. Repentance is one way to remove the debts, mm -hmm. remove the stains and to remove the faults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important for us to uh, confess our sins yeah. and to be repentant. You know, stains will be added to the book. Mm -hmm. Add, added to the book. Um, we saw in another place something to do with charitable deeds. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you think about there's three ways to remove the stains that we have committed. Pop quiz. Y'all know what the three ways are? I don't think I know two. Go ahead. Uh, merits. Uh, merits, merits is, is one way, but the thing about merits is there's two different kinds of merits that take up the two different ways. There's three okay. ways, yeah. two of which include, two of which are merits. There's merits by pain and pain and merits by charitable. Yeah. Merits includes both charitable okay. deeds and pain. Yeah. Okay. So when I'm asking for three different ways, there's charitable deeds, which we've read about. Mm -hmm. Over in Philippians, yeah. there's um, repentance, which we're reading about here in, in uh, Hermas. And then there's the pain. And then there's pain. Those are the three ways to remove our stains. Okay. Mm -hmm. and that's important to understand because, you know, you know, we can we can get repentant now or we can do charitable deeds now. If not, like we said, the tribulation is coming. That'll finish off our purification process. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I think it should be noted that, again, I say this is again, this is the first time in all of Scripture, and we've been pretty comprehensive. There's still a, a few verses that, you know, we haven't talked about, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring those out just to make sure we cover every verse. But here it is in Hermas that we're hearing the first time about how it is that our names are to be written in the Book of Life. Yeah, something that's so important. Um, that we have to have in order to um, be a part of the kingdom is in one of the lost and forgotten books. One of the books they took out. Yeah. They didn't take the Shepherd of Hermas out until the 1800s hmm. when a group of Catholic people decided, you know, we're going to change the canon of the Bible. Hmm. And they actually removed the Shepherd of Hermas and took it out. So it was in there until the 1800s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking about this book here. All right, Chris, we're in the um, uh, uh, the third book of the Shepherd of Hermes called Similitudes, and we're looking at Similitudes two. If you would read verse seven, read uh, what is that? Verse twelve. Whosoever therefore shall do these things, he shall not be forsaken by the Lord, but shall be written in the book of life. Boom. Now. We hearing what it is that we have to do to be included in the book of life. Mm -hmm. This right here, uh, uh, other than that one, which talks about repentance. This is the first time we're hearing what it is that we have to do in order to be included in the book of life. And it's over here in similar to two. To not be forsaken. To not be uh, forsaken. What does it say? Not be forsaken. It says, if you shall do these things. We haven't talked about what these things are yet. Mm -hmm. But if you do these things, previous to verse 12, he shall not be forsaken by the Lord, but shall be written in the book of life. So the key to it is, what are these things? Well, all right. Let's go up and let's see what these things are. So this is a similitudes to... Uh, it's the second book out of uh, the book called Similitudes. This one, the, the, the 
this book is about or this chapter is about it says as the vine is supported by the elm so is the rich man helped by the prayers of the poor you remember we did a class on that mm -hmm. yeah. when one of the main things we talked about in that class was how the uh poor have to be grateful what for what they receive from the rich and how the rich and the uh poor are dependent on one on another, each other yes. yeah so that's what's going on here but if we look down here at verse 11 i believe it's getting specific on what it is that's that they're doing in order to cause them to be written in the book of life okay. chris go ahead and read verse 11 even so the poor praying unto the lord for the rich are heard by him and their riches are increased because they are minister to the poor of, of their wealth they are therefore both made partakers of each other's good works. Okay, so you have um, the poor and the rich working together. Mm -hmm. You have the rich that is sharing with the poor right. and the poor who is interceding for the rich. Mm -hmm. And it says, and whosoever therefore shall do these things shall not be forsaken of the Lord, but shall be written in the book of life. So is that once again talking about charity? Definitely talking about charity. Mm -hmm. So so for, so from what we've gathered, the only ways to get your name written in the book of life is to do charitable deeds and to be repentant of your past deeds mm. but let's let's not let's not forget that you know you're also being repentant of um your sins too yeah which mm -hmm. is the transgression of the law yeah so those mm -hmm. those count against you as well but being repentant of that of trans of your sins and of the other wicked deeds you've done mm -hmm. as well as being charitable uh, will cause your name to be written in the book of life mm. now this shouldn't be too surprising because we hear about the ark, that what it is that will help us to survive the tribulation. Let's jump over to the third testament of the Bible and let me show you what I'm talking about. Just like the father provided an ark for Noah to escape the first extinction level event all of those many thousands of years ago, he's given his people the opportunity to escape this extinction level event, extinction level event two, as it is called. Um, we're given an ark to survive it as well. And we can hear about it in chapter 55 of the third testament of the Bible, in fact, all over the third testament of the Bible. But we're going to look down here in chapter 55 at a few verses that talk about this ark, the way that we are to survive the tribulation Chris read verse 17 but I come to prevent the people instructed by me and humanity in general to whom I have made myself known in this time listen my children here is the ark enter I invite you yeah so and we're about to hear about this ark so you can scroll on down and read the next verse if you would Oh, well, let, well, before we go on down, let's let's look at this part right here. You see where it says prevent there? That's actually supposed to be protect. Oh. Yeah, that's one of one of the uh, grammatical errors that I found in this book, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. Well, so if so read that portion again. Using the word protect. Using the word protect. But I come to protect the people instructed by me and humanity in general. The people instructed by me. And how are we instructed by him? Through the scripture and through the through covenant. Mm -hmm. Through the book, through the Torah, through mm -hmm. the scripture. You're right. All right, go to the next verse. 18. For you, O Israel, the ark is the practice of my law. And all who fulfill my commandments in the most perilous and bitter days will find themselves within the ark, strong and feeling protected by the mantle of my love. So here is the repentance part mm -hmm. because we recognize that we are sinful people, yeah. that we were born in sin and we at some point decided to do what it says do there where we have, uh, what, is, what does it say, uh, practiced my law and fulfilled his commandments. Yeah. And by doing so, we find ourselves within the ark, mm -hmm. strong and feeling protected. Uh, by his mantle. Now, if you will go to the next verse. 19. 
And to all this humanity, I say again, the ark is my law of love. All who practice love and charity with their fellow man and with themselves will be saved. Period. Mm -hmm. So here we are in the third testament of the Bible confirming the, the New Testament of the Bible and the Old Testament of the Bible that in order to survive the tribulation, in order to not have to take the mark of the beast, we have to do what? Practice love and charity with their fellow man and with themselves. Check the, and you have to do charitable deeds. And in this one, what does it say? You say that we'll be on the ark in this one. In the other one, it says that... Uh, by doing in the other in verse 18 it says by fulfilling the commandments so those are the two things we have to do in order to have our names written in the book of life is to practice the law and fulfill the commandments and of course the law is exodus chapter 20 through 23 and do charitable deeds and then our names are written in the book of life mm -hmm. yeah I was thinking that it had, it had something to do with charity because it was just constantly mentioned, mentioning charity, 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 and then law, law, law. So by practicing the law and by um, being charitable to our brothers, mm -hmm. and um, the third one was... Um. Well, repentance falls yeah, under repentance, that. Repentance. Yeah, repentance falls under. Well, to me, re when when we're talking about re being repentant, we're we're actually talking about getting back into obedience. You okay, know, because we're recognizing that we were you know sinful people or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Now. Like I said, I wanted to cover everything, and there's one other verse in all of Scripture um, that we have available to us right now um, that talks about the book of life, and that's over here in a book called Old Nine. You ever heard of Old? I have never heard of the book of Old Nine. <laughs> it's O-D-E. This is actually coming out of the Lost Books of the Bible and the Forgotten Books of Eden. Okay. Um, it's actually a Old Testament book called just the Odes of Solomon is okay. actually the title of you heard of that the Odes of Solomon you might have even read it but you um, it's, it's part of the Forgotten Books of Eden and we're going to jump over here to uh, the Odes of Solomon chapter 9 and um, Stacey I'm going to let you read about three verses here started at about verse 9 okay a stone of great price is it and there have been wars on account of the crown. And righteousness has taken it and hath given it to you. Put on the crown in the true covenant of the Lord. And all those who have conquered shall be written in his book. Yep. So here it is again making a connection between the covenant mm -hmm. and the book of life. Yeah. So those who are keeping the, book, the, the covenant and you know are written in this book of life yeah because the covenant actually tells you about doing charitable deeds too as well yeah it does not as much as we learned in the new testament but it does say you know if somebody is in need you have to give them mm -hmm. you have to do you know you have to help them or whatever yeah mm -hmm. and you know i'm constantly thinking about how the messiah um was constantly doing charitable deeds and constantly helping others and we know that he was just a walking law and, you know, so just putting all three of them together, it does make sense. Repentance, law, and charitable deeds. Yeah. All right. So well, I guess we'll get ready to wrap this one up. I'll get the, the question was, it started off, is how is it that we can ensure ourselves that we won't have to take the mark of the beast? So let me ask you this question before we close out. Knowing this, knowing that it's repentance. Repentance, knowing that it's uh, charitable deeds and knowing that it's the law, what would you tell a person that wants their name to be written in this law? What can they start doing today? Well, reading Exodus chapter 20 through 23, understanding what the covenant is and, you know, starts off with the Ten Commandments 
And it ends up talking about this angel that he promises to send to help us through the tribulation. So that's that's one. But in parallel, at the same time, you actually start doing charitable deeds, mm -hmm. you know, actively figuring out what it is that you could do to help the widows, yeah. the uh, orphans. Yeah. And don't forget the Levi. Right. And but one thing that you have to understand is that we are given some time to do that. Are you talking about the 10 days of all? Yeah, yeah, that's why I jumped back over to here to the uh, book called Gad the Seer and uh, chapter 14, looking down here and where it's talking about intentional sins. You got to remember there were three books that were opened. We haven't read them all in this class. In other classes, um, but you have the book of the uh, the book of life, which, you know, you can have eternal life. You have the book of the wicked, you know, which you, you can read down in verse uh, 13. You know, these are people who are turned over to Satan for him to take out into the wilderness or out into the you know wasteland and destroy them as he will. But you also have the uh, book of the sins. Now, this will make up the majority of humans, mm -hmm. people who aware of the law weren't aware of the statutes you know didn't know that we were supposed to be doing uh feast days like tabernacles or passover and such like that and they would have gladly have celebrated with the lord if only somebody had have explained that to them right. these are the book of the unintentional sins or the unintentional you know deeds or whatever but the thing is these people are given an opportunity to get right yeah, just because they're, um, you know, just because I do something bad to you and I didn't intend to, it does not mean that I won't be punished. So you, now you have time to um, make up for those unintentional. Yeah, see, so start right there at verse 10, Chris. And he read the second book, and it contained the unintentional sins of his people. And the Lord said, put that book aside, but save it until one third of the month passes by. To see what that's the 10 days of all one third of course he's talking about years here just in in uh the book of daniel when he talks about the 100 1335 days in the book of revelation when he talks about the 1209 he's he's talking about years here and he's saying that um that he's his book aside for one third of a month that's actually 10 days or 10 years. So we're given 10 years in order to get this stuff right. Yeah, he's putting this book aside for our benefit, you know, for us to have time to make up from some, for some of the wrong that we've done. Yeah, think about how many of us was ignorant, you know, so many years ago of the country. We didn't know anything about statutes and judgments. Yeah, yeah. I'm very thankful that he has put this book aside. Yeah, because we would have been lost. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. most of us didn't even know we were supposed to be keeping the commandments at all. Mm -mm. But now we've, we're given some time to, you know, learn how to live within these commandments. Yeah. And we're given time to do these charitable deeds as well as be repentant. You know, thank the Lord for these 10 days of all. Mm -hmm. All right. So I believe we've answered the question on how it is that we can not have to take the mark of the beast. Yeah, we know that by prepping by saving up, by hiding, by running, that's not going to save us. There's mm -hmm. only one way, and that the Bible supports it by having your names written in the book of life. Got to get your name written in the book of life. So while we are thinking about storing up stuff, you know, maybe we need to, you know, instead of going and buying some canned goods to put on our shelf, maybe we need to go buy some canned goods and, you know, find somebody who is in need and put those canned goods on their shelf. Or do some of the things that we're doing is putting up um stuff for others that you know might need yeah mm -hmm. because you know we have to we, we we have to be charitable those yeah. are the two ways we have to be charitable and we have to be obedient if we ever want to survive this thing you know and you know it's now before we close out what about the people who who talk about the rapture as their way of escaping well, I think you've covered a whole lot about that in different classes about how that's just not an option. Yeah, the but that but this right here explains why it is that they're so adamant about this because the scripture doesn't provide them 
with the, with that scripture that we were left with, mm -hmm. it doesn't provide them with a viable option for not having to take the mark of the beast. So the only way they see that they won't have to take it is if they escape the planet, if they leave here and go somewhere else. So you're saying that they don't want to be tempted to get the mark, so they want to be gone before it's available. Before it's ever even presents itself, they want to be off the planet. Gone somewhere else, gone into the spirit world. Yeah. So you're saying that they don't want the option of repenting. They don't believe that we should be doing the law and they don't want to share or do charitable works. I, I don't know if I say want to. I, I, I would hope that they're just ignorant. Yeah. I would hope they just don't know. Yeah. Because uh, if, if they're truly selfish and they don't want to help people, well, they ain't got a chance. The selfish people are going away, period. Well, I say that because I hear, you know, I watch a lot of videos about uh, prepping and different stuff like things like that. And a lot of people are saying, um, you know, I'm not giving my goods to nobody else. So, you know, a lot of people do don't want to be charitable. They want it all for themselves. And, you know, to say that they just don't know, a lot of people do have the opportunity um, to become uh, believers and 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 start you know uh, uh, doing things of the law and they just don't want to either and a lot of people just don't believe they're doing wrong so they well there are three books there are three books you have the book of the wicked and those will be that will be the book where the selfish people fall in there's no help for them people there's no help for anybody that's selfish. Either you're going to stop being selfish or you're going away, period. I don't care. I don't care what, what you think, how you feel about it or whatever. The, the scripture talks about how there will be people who will be storing up tons of food and they're not going to have the opportunity to eat none of it. Yeah, the one of the things that you always say is you always applied it to me because I was very selfish at one time. And, you know, we talked about that in the last class. Uh, you would always say how your stingy wife is going to get you in trouble. Yeah, your stingy wife going to get you thrown in the hell is what I say. <laughs> because you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to be charitable. Like we've seen. We've seen all over the scripture. Third yeah. Testament, Old Testament, New Testament. I don't care what Testament. It all says the same thing. You're going to have to be charitable and you're going to have to be obedient or you're going away. Mm. You're going away. All right. We're going to wrap it up there, guys. If you got any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comment section of the video. Anything you can add to this discussion. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but may our Father uh, bless you. May he uh, give you peace. May he mm. shine upon you. And shalom. Shalom. Shalom.